So you want to overclock an RX 570 graphics card, either for gaming or for mining. Either way, stick around and I'm going to show you everything you need to know. The AMD RX 570 is an older yet still impressive scrapper of a graphics card. First appearing in spring of 2017, it's based on 14 nanometer architecture and supports DirectX 12. There are a number of different versions of this card on the market in both 4GB and 8GB variants. This particular model is the Gigabyte RX 570 Gaming 8GB. This is one of the more popular models of RX 570 that you are likely to find. However, the steps to overclock are going to be the same no matter what model of card you have. The first thing you're going to want to do is update the drivers. Let's hop over to AMD and grab the latest ones. Now that our drivers are freshly updated, the next step is to install an overclocking program called MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is a totally free tool that gives you a high level of control and monitoring over your graphics card. It's made by the company MSI, but in no way do you have to use it with an MSI brand of card or anything like that. MSI Afterburner works with both AMD and Nvidia graphics cards. There is no registration or membership required, so highly recommended. Now that we have MSI Afterburner installed, let's go through some of the more important settings. The three main sections are voltage, clock speed, and fan settings. We can see that the fan speed is currently set to auto. You can turn this off and manually select the fan speed that you like. Normally for gaming, I'll leave this on auto. For mining, however, I'll set this to a manual speed in order to get the temperatures exactly where I want them. Now for clock, we can set both the core clock of the card as well as the memory clock separately. For voltage, you can see that the setting is grayed out by default. If you'd like to change the voltage, you'll first need to go into properties and check unlock voltage control. I would recommend being very careful when changing around the voltage and only do it in very small increments. After you've made your changes, you can reset them back to the default by clicking on the reverse arrow at the bottom. Once you're satisfied with your changes, you can click the check button to apply them. You can save your current settings to a profile by clicking the save button, then clicking on one of the profiles along the right hand side. Finally, you can have the current settings automatically apply at Windows startup by clicking the window icon in the upper right corner. Now I'm going to put a list of known successful RX 570 overclocks on the screen and also in the description. Every card is different, but this should give you a good jumping off point for possible values that may work for you. Now that you've locked in your overclock settings, you're going to want to test them. For gaming overclocks, I'll usually run a quick benchmarking program called 3D Mark Demo just to be sure it can make it through the test without crashing. Running 3D Mark Demo will also generate some performance ratings to see how much things may have improved from the overclocks. For mining overclocks, I just start up the mining software and let it run. I'll see where the hash rate is compared to before the overclock and let it run for at least an hour. Both with gaming and mining overclocks, once the settings have been pushed too far and I start seeing graphical glitches or crashing or things just don't seem to be working properly, I'll reverse the settings back to what they were just previously when everything was still working solid. At that point, I now have a good idea of where the sweet spot is for overclocking my particular card. I can either stick with those settings or try tweaking things just a little bit further. Now, once you start using your card for real, such as a high-end gaming session or hours of non-stop mining, you may start running into issues that weren't there when you did your initial tests. If that happens, go back into MSI Afterburner and tweak things down just a little bit further until things are running rock solid again. Now my question for you is, do you have an RX 570 that you've successfully overclocked? If so, what settings were you able to achieve? Feel free to add a comment with what those settings were and that information may be helpful to other people who are trying to do the same thing. So that's all there is to it. Thank you so much for watching.